Well, guys, are you ready for a major war in the Middle East? A war that is looking more and more likely every day. A war that could involve Israel, Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, Russia, China, North Korea, United States of America, the whole world in a third world war. It's looking more and more like that's going to happen because of the tensions keep increasing and because of the rhetoric and the headlines I'm reading. However, even if it does, it spread out into World War III and the war actually stays right there centered in the Middle East and it stays between Israel, Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas. It's still going to affect us here in the United States. I mean, guys, just look at these headlines. I have three headlines here and I'll show some more up on the screen. Israel says Hezbollah strike on Golan Heights kills at least 12. Strike on Israeli Golan Heights kills 11 and threatens to spark a wider war. Israel announces strikes on Hezbollah in Lebanon after rocket attack kills 12 in Golan Heights. And the headlines just keep going and going and going because the tensions keep increasing and increasing. And we saw the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu come to Washington DC and address Congress. Essentially his address to Congress was to demand more, more, more. More weapons, more funding, more support. We have to fight with Israel because Israel's enemies are your enemies. We have to fight Iran there. If we don't, they will be here in the United States. You have to fight them here on United States soil. So support Israel. Fight, fight Iran there. Give, give, give. More, more, more. And that's been pretty much the theme of the last decades, it seems, but especially the last few years. We have little Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky demanding more, more, more. And we ship more, more, more. Now we have Benjamin Netanyahu addressing Congress. More, more, more. They have wanted to destroy Iran for decades. And Iran has wanted to destroy Israel for decades. Because they are the two major military powers in that region. And each one wants to be the dominant superpower in that region. So they want to destroy each other. And that's what the... Uh, if you look into it and look at the USS Liberty incident, that was a false flag being carried out by Israel to drag the United States into war with Iran. It's been something that's been brewing for a long, long time. And now it's looking more and more like that's going to happen. And even if, like I said, the United States doesn't get directly involved militarily and just sends money support it's going to affect us here in the united states because the united states is having to print more trillions to fund israel's war with iran it's going to cause more inflation obviously and then we had the strait of hamuz that we weren't likely to be bottlenecked down or completely closed off stopping the shipments of oil and gas through that region which will increase our prices here dramatically because everything is centered around oil and gas here in the United States. They can talk about solar all they want, but without the gas and oil coming through the Strait of Hamuz, our prices will go up dramatically. So we'll have inflation plus severely declined production and shipments of oil to the United States. That will affect definitely oil prices, gasoline prices, heating prices. We're going into winter time here in a few months. So those prices will definitely skyrocket. But not only that, if you take and think about it, pretty much everything that the United States does, actually the world does because the world's dependent on oil. Manufacturing, production, shipping, everything will go up because the price will go up to the companies, the manufacturers, to manufacture and ship products, and that cost will be put over on the people, the consumer. So prices will go up on pretty much everything. So we have that because of supply issues, plus, like I said, inflation, because it's going to take money, currency, 
The United States is already $34 trillion, almost $35 trillion in debt as of this recording. And they will have to print more trillions to fund Israel, to buy more weapons for Israel, to fund this war that's going to break out into a wider war in the Middle East. And that is a best case scenario where the United States doesn't get directly involved. And while some people here in the United States would be okay with that because we're helping Israel to fight over there, because we have to fight them over there, because if we don't stop them over there in the Middle East, we'll be fighting Iran here in the United States, or so we've been told. They failed to realize that the United States has already been invaded with Iranian sleeper cells here in the United States to come across the border. I've heard that for a long time, and more than likely it is fact. I mean, if I were the leadership in Iran, I would definitely be sending trained groups there across the border into the United States because they know the United States is a supporter of Israel, and they know that if war breaks out, all that kinetic war breaks out between Israel and Iran, the United States is going to be on the side of Israel. And when the United States attacks Iran, Hezbollah, with Israel, they can activate these sleeper cells here in the United States. And if I were Iran, I would definitely have sleeper cells crossing over the border. I would train those inside of Iran. They would know what targets to hit, what infrastructure to hit to cause the most damage in the United States, and no doubt they do. I would run through scenarios, training. I would instruct these groups to be able to make improvised IEDs. I don't want to say that here on YouTube, but look up what IED means. I would have them instructed to make that with specific targets, specific ways to attack those targets, and I would have specific orders I could give that when given would activate those attacks inside the United States. And no doubt, they have done that also. If they have it, then they would have to be completely stupid, in my opinion. I mean, wouldn't you, if you were putting your, put your place in the place of the Iranian leadership? Wouldn't you have sleeper cells in the United States? Wouldn't you have sleeper cells around the world? I mean, think about it. And that is, if you look at the way Iran operates, they operate through a lot of sleeper cells in different groups. So you know they have sleeper cells here in the United States, even though a lot of people want to deny that. And you know they've been trained, they've been instructed on what to do, where to go, how to do it, to cause the absolute most damage here in the United States. But this is going to affect us all, like I said, greatly, even if it does stay between Israel, Iran, Hezbollah. If it just stays there, and the United States just sends money and weapons, it's going to cause major issues because of oil shipments, gas shipments through the Strait of Hormuz, plus United States printing and printing and printing more currency to send to Israel for more support more weapons, it's going to cause more inflation. So either way it goes, it's not going to be a win for the United States whatsoever at all. It's going to affect us all here. So you need to realize that and realize the likelihood of this happening is increasing every single day. If you look at the news headlines, the rhetoric, if you look at the fact that the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, came and addressed Congress demanding more and more and more and more support, we have to stop Iran now. They've wanted this for a long time. It's easy to see what's going to happen. And like I said, even if we don't get involved in direct military combat with Iran, Hezbollah, possibly Russia, North Korea, World War III, even in the best case scenario, it's going to affect shipments of oil. It's going to affect the prices on everything that we buy, plus the inflation. So it's going to put even more strain on the economy. So get prepared. Get ready. Stock up on food, obviously, because the price will go up on that. Because of shipping, farm production, and things like that. Rely on oil, rely on gas. So the prices will definitely go up. Inflation will cause prices to go up on everything also. But everything will be affected price-wise. So you think you're having trouble now making ends meet? I mean, you just wait until all that war breaks out in the Middle East and you watch your prices go sky high. I mean, you might be looking at gasoline prices at the pump at $10 or more. 
inflation. Like I said, we already have inflation on, especially on food. Inflation is what we notice the most, actually. It's inflation on everything, but we've noticed it on food the most. It seems because we ought to buy food. So stockpile as much as you can. Now, non perishable foods. Get a water filter for clean, to filter drinking water, to have clean drinking water. Medical supplies, just in general, keep prepping and stockpiling. Stockpile the things you need, the things you use every day, the things that have a good shelf life. Stockpile those, put those back, take it to the rafters. Because in my opinion, all hell is fixing to break loose in the Middle East very, very soon. Prepare for it the best you can and get ready. Pray that it doesn't happen, but it's definitely looking like that's what is going to happen. But anyways, guys, if you liked the video, get a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'm going to create more matter here, and I'll see you all in the next video, hopefully.